Short stories are a yes from me, dog. Hey readers, I'm Abby. I'm Emma. And welcome back to another episode of Six Picks. It's November, which means the days are getting shorter, and what's more perfect to read in the fall than some short stories? My first pick is Sweet and Low by Nick White, which is a set of short stories that really modernizes the Southern Gothic kind of classic literature, which it's kind of weird, but this year I have been really drawn to these modern updates of Southern Gothic in an unexpected way because I don't even really love the classics. That's not one of my go-to genres, but there's something so interesting and so satisfying in watching an author like Nick White, who really understands the ins and outs of those tropes, be able to execute them perfectly and then play with them. All of the stories and characters are really grounded in reality and the everyday, but there's always just a hint of something outsized or absurd or fantastical, and that's something that I just love in all of my literature. My first pick is What It Means When a Man Falls from the Sky by Leslie Neka Arima. This slim volume of stories is absolutely fabulous. It packs a punch. Each one of these stories takes different elements of genre and weaves them all in together. So there's a story with a little bit of sci-fi. There's a story with a little bit of thriller. Um, some take place in Nigeria. Some have American characters. And they're sort of all woven in together. One of my favorite stories is about a character that grows up in America and her cousin who grows up in Nigeria and the absolutely wild night they have. My second pick is Get in Trouble by Kelly Link. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, I picked this up when it came out about three years ago, kind of thinking that I didn't love short stories. I, there were a couple of authors whose short stories I liked, but in general I thought like, ah, they're not really for me. And then reading this collection, I realized, oh no, short stories are definitely for me. They're incredible when they're done right, and Kelly is just a master of the form. All of her stories are so specific and interesting and well wrought. They're like, so intensely weird and hilarious and kind of like dark and scary and exciting. It's got everything. My second pick is You Think It, I'll Say It by Curtis Sittenfeld. Now, whereas Kelly Link deals in the absurd, Curtis traffics in the totally sort of beautifully mundane and realistic. So all of these stories focus on cool, modern women that I could really see myself in. And the situations that she describes are things that could happen to you or me. One of my favorite stories, the one that I don't stop thinking about, is one where a woman loses her driver's license in a van that drops her from the airport to her hotel. Oh no. And so she calls the guy back and is like, hey, do you have my license? And he comes to bring it to her and things get a little weird. Um, but I'm like, that could totally happen to me. Um, so all of the women in Curtis's stories I find are really relatable. And to me, that was the most uh, delicious part of reading these short stories is I felt at home in every single one of them. My final pick is Heads of the Colored People by Nafisa Thompson Spires. And I chose this book because it caught my eye with a quote on the cover from Kelly Link, my last pick author. Your fave. Yep. So, you know, if it's good enough for Kelly Link, it's good enough for me. And uh, even though Nafisa's style is much more grounded in reality, I think there was some commonality to it that I really enjoyed. Um, the people and the stories in this collection are so specific that you can imagine their whole worlds, not just the microcosm of what's happening in the story. And I love that Nafisa's style is um, almost academic. It's so 
sharp and smart and also laden with literary references. So that's always a fun Easter egg and you can get as intense about it as you want and like really go down a rabbit hole of research, which I did a couple of times, or you can just kind of let the references wash over you and add to the overall appeal of each story. My final pick is Days of Awe by A.M. Holmes. Now, I read her novel, May We Be Forgiven, and I loved it, so I was so eager to pick up this volume of short stories. Now, A.M. Holmes dabbles a little bit in the odd, but they're also set in reality. Um, one of my favorites is about a family that heads into a big box store, and they've all got their list and their assignments for the day. And by the time they leave, the father of the family has been nominated by some bystanders to run for president. They've gone over to the Xerox machine and started making campaign flyers. So it's definitely funny, and these stories will not only make you laugh, but they'll make you think. Well, those are our six picks for short stories. Did we leave out a collection that you absolutely love? Let us know in comments below or tweet at us at Read It Forward. And to sign up for our newsletter and get even more book recommendations in your inbox, go to readitforward.com slash subscribe. <laughs>